Just this week in real pirate ball. Documenting the 2010 Pittsburgh Pirates baseball season. And here's your host, Greg Mercer. What's up, everybody? It's Mercer here with week number 20 of This Week in Real Pirate Ball. This was another momentous week for the Pirates, and it's also time to give you my three-quarter poll update on the team. So let's go ahead and get into it right now. There was a very important birthday in the Pirates family this week. It was the 18th birthday of the Pirates' consecutive streak of losing seasons. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. On Friday, the Pirates lost their 82nd game of the year to the New York Mets. I must say, in order to reach this momentous day on the 20th of August and after only 122 games, it takes a special type of suck. But hey, look at it this way. Now the pirate streak has to sign up for selective service, so maybe it'll end up getting killed for the country someday. It also can have familiar relations with other consecutive losing seasons without being charged with statutory rape. Oh wait, there are no other consecutive losing seasons this old. Let's take a look at how the Pirates are doing after three quarters of the season, starting with the offense. The Pirates ranked Ted last in the National League in terms of runs per game. They're almost a half a run worse than the next lowest scoring team. They're also last in terms of runs, hits, batting average, and on-base percentage. With the arrival of Pedro Alvarez, Jose Tabata, and Neil Walker, the Pirates have increased their scoring output by about one quarter of a run per game. Still, since the arrival of Pedro, the Pirates have only scored three runs or less in 38 of 60 games. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. Not surprisingly, the pitching hasn't been much better since the halfway point. The Pirates rank next to last in the National League in runs allowed per game, earned runs, home runs allowed, and hits allowed. They're also dead last in whip, strikeouts, and batters hit by pitch. There is one bright spot, though. They lead the league in the lowest amount of innings pitched, but that's because they've only had to pitch in the ninth inning in 80 of 124 games. If nothing else, the defense has been slightly better over the last 40 games. The Pirates rank right about league average in terms of fielding percentage. They're still dead last in terms of total zone fielding runs above average at 64 runs below the average. That's almost identical to their rating after 80 games. I think the increased range at second from Neil Walker and in left field by Jose Tavtov helped us stabilize some of the defensive deficiencies of the team. However, the Pirates' pitch-to-contact starters need to have an above-average defense to be effective. As of now, the defense just isn't quite good enough to get that done. No one's classier than you. Pirates fans who don't just look at the Major League team's failures are going to look past everything I've just talked about and focus their attention on the positive happenings this week concerning the 2010 draft. The top two picks for the Pirates, Jamison Tyone and Stetson Alley, were both signed to contracts before the signing deadline. Tyone earned $5.5 million and Alley was given $2.5 million. Show me the money! I see these as pretty good bargains considering that they were thought of as the top two high school arms available. To top it off, the Pirates were awarded the rights to Latin American free agent Luis Heredia with a $2.6 million offer. While I wonder why teams like the Yankees or Red Sox didn't bother to get involved, it's the most notable Latin American signing that GM Neil Huntington has had during his tenure. Today I didn't even have to use my 8K. I gotta say it was a good day. By securing these three extremely good young arms for the system, the Pirates now have hope that their pitching situation will be markedly improved over the next several years. I've decided to dub this three-headed knight of Pirates pitching Sir Talietia. You're lucky you're not next to him. What do you mean? You snore. Oh, I don't. Anyway, you've got bad breath. This marks the third consecutive year that the Pirates have spent over $10 million on the draft, which is a major change from previous regimes. I also feel that the signing of Heredia is a benchmark in terms of turning the team around. The Pirates aren't just all talk at this point, at least concerning the draft. 
The biggest question that's still lingering in my mind is whether or not the Pirates will sign their potential Major League stars to extended contracts. Until this happens, the jury is still out as to whether or not the Pirates are truly committed to having a winning team at the Major League level. The Pirates lost 3 out of 4 to the Marlins in the first series of the week. Their only win came on Monday as they crushed the Fish 7-1. James McDonald made another great start at PNC as he went seven innings and had six strikeouts. Garrett Jones and Pedro Alvarez both hit two run scoring doubles to put the Pirates well out in front. RBIs have been hard to come by for the Pirates pretty much all year, and Jones and Alvarez have to be the guys that drive in runs as Andrew McCutcheon, Jose Tabata, and Neil Walker have done a pretty good job at getting on base with their high batting averages. The other three games were full of mistakes as the Pirates lost 6 0, 3 2, and 4 2. Good pitching performances by Ross Ollendorf and Paul Mahomes were both spoiled as the Pirates offense was, well, the Pirates offense. The Pirates also dropped 2 out of 3 against the Mets over the weekend. Once again, poor pitching and defense led to most of the trouble. Jeff Carsons was hit hard on Friday and James McDonald walked 5 men and allowed 5 runs on Saturday. Sunday's game was the only reprieve as the Pirates won 2-1 in a hard fought game. Lassings Millage and Jose Tabata both hit home runs, and Zach Duke pitched seven strong innings to outduel ace Johan Santana for the win. It's been a while since the Pirates won one of their classic pitch well and hit home runs to win the game, so you knew it was coming sooner or later. Now it's time for my bet against the Pirates update for week number 20. As I continue to maintain, any time I can make money while the Pirates are at home is a win in my book. The Pirates went 2-5 and five this week, and I went 5-2 and two on my bets. I won one run line bet and four money line bets. I also managed to avoid a run line burn in the 3-2 loss against Florida. I won $49.01 this week, which brought my total overall profit to $322.79. With the Pirates trending to lose well over 100 games this year, I'm looking at much more profit than I ever expected to make. I'm just going to continue to make educated bets for the rest of the year and see what happens. At this point, if I make it the $400 profit, I would call this experiment a rousing success. What do I think about the Pirates this week? The Bucks are basically playing out the string at this point and are trying to claw out as many wins as they can. The biggest question now is whether or not they'll be able to hold on to the worst record in baseball. They're currently two and a half games ahead of the Baltimore Orioles for that distinction. There's a high probability of them staying in the lead after this week's six games. Three at home versus Albert Pujols and the Cardinals and three on the road versus the Milwaukee Brewers. Well, that about does it for this week. Make sure you check in next week for what will hopefully be a more interesting edition of This Week in Real Pirate Ball. I'm Greg Mercer. Later.